So at this point, to be able to get repeatable timings, I need to get rid of all noise, all contention, lock the process threads down to a particular CPU, and make sure that the memory that they're using is on the socket, on the node attached to that socket, on the memory attached to that socket. So I was using the CPU map command to carve out something. And by the way, you have to be careful, CPU map, these are not showing out as a logical, those are the physical, and since I'm on the last partition, these socket numbers here are wrong. I have a request to get that fixed, but nothing's been done yet. So again, what I was going to try to do was use the first four CPUs for a boot CPU set, and everything that's spawned off by the check config in its scripts are going to be within that boot CPU set. And then I'm going to put SSHD into a login CPU set so that anybody that comes in through SSHD is going to be in a login CPU set. However, if I come in as a serial console, that's not SSH. So logging in through the serial console will put me into the boot CPU set, but logging in with SSHD will put me into the login CPU set. And again, one of the problems is they're both sharing the memory. So I could log into the login CPU set, fill up the memory on the node, and that will impact the boot CPU set. For example, I could write a large file and fill up my CPU set with dirty, and that will impact the other CPU set. But I've only got four nodes here, and I'm trying to demonstrate contention and problems. So I'm going to go with splitting that node's memory between the two CPU sets. I would never advise that, and I would never advise overlapping CPU sets. So I've had sites that say, I don't want my CPUs idle. So they tie them up in busy and overlap CPU sets. Again, the utilization goes up, but the throughput is going down because of contention, thrashing, cache thrash effects, things of that sort. All the noise, we're trying to get rid of all the noise, including check config demons that you don't need. Turn off everything you can. I've even done some benchmarks where I've turned off networking just to get rid of all that noise on the interconnect. So I'm going to start off with a uh, it's the CPU boot CPU set dot com zero through three and sixteen. I only need zero through three right now. So I'm declaring zero through three, and then the memory attached to zero through three. And by the way, CPU zero is special. I know Moab and Torque has issues. You kind of avoid the first socket. And then I want for both just to see that what happens. Now the other thing I have to do here, if I do a man on boot CPU set, I need to also specify an init Trojan process. So this is going to get fired up before init even fires up to make sure that everything that init does stays within the boot CPU set. There will still be some things scattered around the system, but we've fenced and contained as much as possible from this. So let me do a VI and it's the uh, elilo, oops, elilo.com, one, two, three, four, five, six, it looks like seven lines. And I'm going to change this one to be CPU set. I always like to have it as a separate boot option myself. And then I need to put up in here the init Trojan. Okay. Now I'm going to run a UV config, which is going to make sure that all the SGI UV parameters are in there. But it, it runs on boot and shutdown, and this will ensure that when I'm done, Everything is still clean. More on itseelilo.com. And it is still there. Now I'm also going to go into boot EFI, EFI, SUSI, and check the elilo.com there. When the UV config runs, the last thing it does is run the elilo command, which would then update the one in booty if I, if I susie. 
And I don't see it here, actually. I thought that it would be updating it for me. So I don't see the, uh, well, let's just grep here. Nothing in there. So I'm going to do an Elilo command and now check it. And now I do have that in there. For some reason, I thought Elila was going to be run by UV config, but I, I didn't see that here. Okay, the other thing I want to do now, I have a script to put into an init tab, just a stub for me to save time. I'm going to copy this nothing script. It'll be in the lab manual, too, into itsy init.d. And I also want to do a, uh, I need to edit an itsy sysconfig nothing sysconfig file and then go var1 equals true. That's just the way the script is written. I just want to see if it works now. Oops, nothing underscore local. And it is complaining about something, but that's okay right now. It is complaining that the login CPU set was not created successfully. This was hard coded into the script and I wanted to check this. Now basically I'm doing this I'm creating a CPU set, but it was for a different machine. And you got to be careful when you repartition and do things or move this stuff from one system to another because with virtual CPUs, with hyperthreads, it it goes physical virtual rather than uh, well, it goes physical virtual, physical virtual rather than all the physical and all the virtual. I did want it on MEM0, but I need to get the proper CPUs. Let me get those first. CPU map. Again, I wanted 16 through 19. And this is just a proof of concept type of script here. Mem0, and then it's going to create the CPU set and then figure out the youngest SSHD. Now, if SSHD doesn't start during boot, if there's a problem there, then it won't find anything, and you won't get a SSHD that's in this login CPU set that I'm creating. So by putting the PID of the process that I want into the CPU set's tasks file, that process then becomes contained within that CPU set. Let me just see if this is going to be successful now. At least it is successful. I'm going to go into itsy, I'm sorry, into dev CPU set. And there is a login directory in there, but note I don't have a PBS or a boot directory in there yet. I'm going to go into login and cat CPUs. Oops. So I can see CPU 16 through 19, cat mems, mem0. We also have something called CPU exclusive and mem exclusive. That basically says nobody can come into my CPU set. That says stay away. I've got a fence up. You can't come into my CPU set. So exclusive says it's mine. Stay away. Hard wall does not work. I've got a PV on that one. Let's see. A zero says there is no hard wall, which means that my slab and my page cache, my dirty, my right back, cache clean can all be allocated outside my CPU set. So if I had set the mem hard wall to a zero and it worked successfully, my data that I'm writing would be able to get outside my CPU set an LS on a slab could get outside my CPU set. Now, personally, I don't like that. I'd rather have a hard wall up so that anybody in the CPU set 
has to live with what they ask for and has to fight for resources and not take them from me. I don't want to be in a 32 terabyte machine and somebody write a 16 terabyte file and that stuff to come into my CPU set and give me problems. So basically, Mem Hardwall is behaving like a one all the time. The other thing we have here is allocators. Huh, that's interesting. My memory spreads are a zero, which means I'm not going to do anything round robin in a memory spread. Of course, I've only got one node in this situation, so I'm not sure that that's very relevant. When I get into the PBS CPU set, we'll have to worry about that. But this memory spread says my page cache, this one up here, page cache can go round robin across the nodes of my CPU set, or even with hard wall, if it were working, go outside my CPU set. And spread slab says my slab can go outside my CPU, or can go round robin in my CPU set rather than first touch. I want to check something here. Usually those are inherited by the parent. Those are a one. So I may evaluate that later to figure out what I want to do here. And I've got four nodes. Any questions at this point? By the way, if I go into login here, if I cat slash proc slash dollar dollar says CPU set, I'm in what I call the global CPU set. Everything is in the CPU set here. If you actually cat slash itc slash fs tab, when SGI loads performance or loads foundation, we actually put in a mount point for the dev CPU set file system. And that's what turns CPU sets on. CPU sets are available on any x86 or Itanium kernel, not available on the 386 type kernels. Okay. Now, the other thing I need to do here, I, I'm just going to echo dollar dollar into tasks here and then cat my CPU set. And now notice I'm in the login CPU set and now contained within my CPUs, upper CPU 16 through 19. The other thing I need to do here, let me go here, PBS, default. Bin. I'm going to do uh, md5sum on pbs underscore mom. This default pbs mom that I have here is the standard. It is not a CPU set aware pbs mom. Now, you might have in your lab exercises when you install pbs have copied that or linked that. It's entirely up to you how you want to do that. I'm just going to copy it rather than link it. Service PBS stop. And now we'll start it. Oh, let's see. No, I, I, before I do that, I need to copy. Now I'll start it. And it looks like I'm running. I'm going to go into dev CPU set. And I now have a PBS Pro CPU set. Now, PBS Pro is going to take over any CPUs that were not part of the any other CPU set. And I don't have a boot CPU set yet. I have to reboot for that. I intend to do just one reboot. I'm going to go into that PBS directory there. And there are no subdirectories in there until jobs run, but let me cat CPUs. I can see I'm using 4 through 15 and 21 through 31. So skipping the CPU sets that were in the – I'm not sure why it skips 0 through 3 since I don't really have a CPU set defined for them yet. And 
that was 16 through 19. Uh, another thing I better check here, check config, nothing, underscore local. It's off. Let me check config it on. And I got it. I'm got. i not going to worry about that run level problem. I think that's all okay. But I am going to, uh, let's see. I need to check the run level. Let's see. I'm probably at a run level five on this type of kernel. Oops. Oh, it's run level three. So I better make sure at run level three that these demons start in the proper order. RC3.D. Let me just do an LS on the S's. So where are we here? SSHD is at eight. I need PBS to start up after that. And I need the local to start after that. Local is actually at four, not at eight. So let's see. I need nothing local to run after SSHD. Where was PBS Pro? There's PBS, that's also an eight. But I want to kind of change the uh, order of these things. Check config dash dash delete on uh, nothing underscore local. And on PBS. And let me edit the nothing underscore local. And I need it to run after SSHD. We really aren't using a run level four anymore. That has gone away. I'm going to get that out of there. And then let's check the PBS one. Do a check config dash dash add nothing underscore local. Let's see where it is for run time or run order. Uh, so we were SSHD was at eight still. Let's just double check that right there. Nothing underscore local is now starting after it. And then let's do it on PBS. Oops. Did not like something. adding it again. That looks like it's clean now. Let's check RC3.D. And where's PBS starting? It should be 10. Why am I not seeing it here? It's still at an 8. Let me find something else. Well, you changed two things, so maybe... I don't think it should have a dollar sign. I think you were right the first time. Yeah, I know. Check config, dash dash delete, PBS. Let's try Apache 2. See what that does. The Apache 2 is up here at 12. Of course, the problem is if somebody check configs Apache 2 off, it'll complain about that too. I'm not getting any errors this time. Let's see what we get for an order here. 
And at least I've got the order right now. Okay. I could nitpick and try to find something better. I've always hated that in the uh, Sluts version versus Red Hat where I have to put a dependency order rather than just give me a hard number. I wish I could do both. So I think we're ready for a reboot. I always like to do a reboot on the serial console. Control right bracket S to steal. Which is going to bounce the system. I'm not going to worry about that uh, hardware event logger. We see PBS stopped and removed its CPU set. I thought PM Logger would be running, but that may be a problem in the way they've got, because they added that new init script, and the PCP script might have actually shut it down already. you got to be real careful at this point. Unmounting file systems, it may hang there, and you don't see what file system that is stuck on the unmount. you got to be real careful about that. And Brian, one of the things that happened in XFS and SLUS 11 SP2 is directory access times. So things like an LS and a uh, find now result in metadata changes, which result in journaling activity. So I didn't used to get big slabs, and then the crown events like the locate utility would run. There was no, nothing changing out there, and in the past that would not result in journaling and metadata changes, but now it does. And then it took me two hours to basically reboot a system as it tried to cleanly unmount and deal with a large metadata file system. Now, once this is back up and running, I intend to run a uh, Code 2 multi-threaded and then look at placement and pinning, and then also a Code 6, the MPI ping pong test. By the way, I forgot to mention this, but there is also, let me get a console terminal here. I'm just trying to use the time while we're waiting for the boot. There is a MPI test underscore MPT. This used to be known as the PALAS, P-A-L-L-A-S, PALAS benchmark. And then Intel bought it and was known as the Intel MPI benchmark. Ohio State is using it as the Ohio State benchmark. I'm doing RPM-QL on that thing. And we do have some tests in there that we can run. Do a module load, MPT, and then I can do an MPI run dash NP. Let me just go two threads wide and pick one of these benchmarks. So there is a workload capability here that gets loaded with SGI's MPT. Oh, I better check my uh, boot order here. That's not what I wanted, actually. A tab. I need the uh, SLES 11 underscore SP2. I did not make it the default. But sometimes it's handy to have that MPI test underscore MPT as a uh, baseline reference to see what do these things look like normally on my machine. Then if you get into a problem situation, you've got a baseline and, and a benchmark to compare to. Now, I don't get plan on going much longer here. 
going to continue this. Oh, there we are now. The verbose, I just saw it scroll by. So that verbose is now telling me about the creation of the CPU set. Now that's not in any log because we don't have a file system yet. So that isn't logged anywhere. And there's some of these, by the way, these can't attach PIDs to boot CPU sets. Don't worry about those. Those are K-worker threads, and you don't need to worry about them. Uh, engineering said don't care, won't fix. PBS has started. Okay. So ls slash dev on CPU set, and I do have three CPU sets. The PBS Pro, the login, and the boot CPU set. Any questions right now? I wanted to check the spreads here. Those are set to a one. Those are set to a zero, but again, there's only one blade here. One node here, I mean, one socket. So I'm not going to worry about that. Okay? And then let's get into the boot CPU set, cap the CPUs. There's the 0 through 3, cap the uh, MEMS, and then let's cap the uh, spreads. I don't, since it's just one node, they are set to 1. That's interesting. Okay. I'm not sure uh, whether that – I was thinking that the spreads would get inherited when I created the login CPU set, but that might be something that I would have to watch for in my initialization script. Now, I came in through the serial console, so if I cat slash proc slash dollar dollar slash CPU set, I'm in the boot CPU set. Okay? Let me log out now. I'll go in as root, cat slash proc slash dollar slash CPU set. This one's in the login CPU set. Okay. Let me go in as guest. In the guest directory, I have a jobs directory that I've been using here all week. Let me get rid of some of the old output files. So let me just start off with a Q sub of that code to GNU. Oops, module load, PBS. By the way, PBS WLA, oh, permission denied. I'm not rude. Bring up top. I'm going to go to F and get the CPU it's on, which is a J. And I also want WCHAN as a Y. I want to get rid of priorities are meaningless. Priorities don't change anymore. The priority scheme in the completely fair, fair share scheduler is behind the scene. You don't actually see the number. Let's see. I'm going to get rid of share as well. W. I, W, actually I think I'm going to put in an H for threads and then write that off. So there's my code 2 GNU 0 running. Oh, I still have a whole bunch of data from before. As long as I can do this before that code finishes, the accounting record is written when it finishes. Still running there. Let me also do a Q sub of code2mp.pbs. Let me fire up two of them. At this point, I should probably be bringing up my PMG sys.
probably going to have to restart the window manager. I don't know why that thing doesn't survive reboot. It's an order. Again, the hard part at this point is when you're multi-threading, being able to see everything at once. Ooh, shoot. Hard part is seeing everything at once and trying to look at, you know, thousand thread-wide applications. For me, the main tool is PMG Sys, and I have taken uh, PMG Sys V outputs and then reordered the CPUs to give them more physical meaning rather than just the virtuals and then the logicals, or the physicals and the logicals. So PMG Sys. Now I got that. I can see the one thing running here. Let's bring up top. That's the code to GNU. Not sure what happened to code 2 MP here, QSTAT A. Um, again. like that job is done. Oh, so I do have some things queued up still. Hmm, let me do a queue delete on 58 and 102. I fired stuff up overnight, but I hadn't done anything with them. And I'm not even sure why I'm not uh, getting anything started or initiated right now. Let me do a few delete on 106, 107, 108. 106 is done. Okay, everything's clean there right now. Let me go back here. So those ran. Oops, I got one output here, Co2 GNU. Take a look at that. I had a problem with JA. I want to fix that here. Hang on a second. They took out uh, job ID support in PBS Pro, which I didn't really like. If I service PBS stop and then start it again, it will have the I job ID of my login session here. Okay, we're on a split 106. So here I was just running it with the time command. Again, we were in the 100 second range for this thing. Locking it down isn't going to help it that much. Again, tuning it and getting rid of the uh, hardware events that are non productive in there, cache misses in particular. I'm running it several times here. Here's with the GNU 3. It went down to 20 seconds. Then I ran it again at 99 seconds. Code 2 GNU. Just got a couple of different runs here. And that one was at 20 seconds again. So we're in the 100 second range to 20 second range. Okay, now let's do a Q sub on this 20. No available resources on the nodes. Oh, geez.
Okay, let's hang on a second. Let's look at what the uh, job is asking for. It's asking for 32 CPUs, and I don't have 32 CPUs. I've already taken eight away. So let's just go 16 wide on this thing. I better load the proper compiler here. Try submitting that. Okay, I didn't like that. It came back too quick. unable to locate oh I called it something different I just called it Intel now the next hard part here is this thing get this goes in and out so quickly Being able to see it is not easy. See if this ran successfully. No errors there. There's the job run. Oh, no such file. Could not compile. Could not find I for it. down here at the end, but it also has a weird path to it. Thought I had this working on this system, but like a different compiler than I had before. I think uh, Camille was talking about that. Let me go into SW, oops, go root first. like the compiler here has a different uh, you'll still need the 64 what bit ones for the lib I think let's see what we got here I, I had to do the same thing so there's an eye for it so it looks like it'll work right now let's find out now um, did you hear what Camille said about uh, lib? You, I didn't those, check those, on lib. I'm assuming it's yeah, in the same those, SW Intel. It's not. No. Nope. Nope. Oh, that's that's what you were saying. Okay. Yeah. There it is. Let me fix that. It's finding it. We can see the compiler coming in. Now we have to worry about OMP num threads. 
and depending upon your compiler, that is handled differently. The latest compiler I had, if OMP NumThreads is not set, it will spawn one per physical CPU or one per CPU rather than one per CPU in the CPU set. So things have kind of changed with the 12 compiler. Back here, I don't even see it multi-threading right now. Do more on that 111. Was that it? Uh, no, I don't think that was it. Still waiting for 112 to come back. While that's going on, let me do a, another one here, 20 dash. I want 16 CPUs, so I want to make sure that OMP num threads. Ah, there we are. Let's change that to 16. See where? We, oh, that's other output still not coming back. But let's submit this one again. Now, if you look at Dev CPU set. PBS, there's going to be a sub CPU set in there for any jobs that got submitted. So again, because that one job appears to still be running, there it is. And again, I'm going to have problems with it because it is more threads than I got CPUs. See if I can catch that. PS dash ET, there for code 2 MP. Let's count them. So this is going to be stuck in a barrier. If I go back to my desktop here, let's see. And we can see where it's running here. And it's not getting very good utilization there. Very, very low CPU time, lots of system time. Let me kill that thing. Actually, though, before I kill it, let me see. I'm going to do a CPU set dash capital Q option and put it into a file. More of the file. So this is a script that I wrote just to kind of show what I can do here. But we're looking at the global CPU set and what's in it and what the flags are, and then all the threads that are in that CPU set. And then I've also got my other CPU sets here. So here's my PBS Pro CPU set. And then the job that I've got here. And then the processes that are in the job. And I'm also getting things like CPU numbers here. And then here's my login CPU set. What's this one? And that's the boot CPU set. So I've got global CPU, uh, PBS CPU set, per job CPU set, login CPU set, and the boot CPU set. So it kind of gives me the attributes of everything that's running on the system at that time. I do still have that thing running. I'm just going to do a Q delete on it because, again, it's not going to finish. It's stuck in barrier. We could attach to it with perf and stuff and see that it's stuck on that sked yield and uh, KMP weight type of routines. Waiting for the next one to start. Get out of there. Well, that's on that 112. Now, I did actually in this thing generate some report examples on loops, how they're paralyzed and stuff like that. And then here was the program running, but because I killed it, we never got any output on the, the data. 
Okay, so we've got another one running now. Let me do a CPU. Uh, i got to go to this root for this. End users don't have permissions to get into CPU sets very well. CPU set dash capital Q. I'm going to add a dash V option into there. And the V option is now going to give me a verbose report. I don't care about that right now. Let me take a look at the report now. So what it's going to do now is after the PS line, it's going to print out the affinity mask to see what it's pinned to. And then I'm also getting it by number instead of mask and also the CPU allowed. So this thing, again, is stuck on 24. I don't care about that. Let's try to get down to code 2. So here now is the code 2 that I've got. And I'm doing a code 2 here on code 2 MPs, <coughs> showing the CPUs they're on, 20, 21. Again, it's kind of hard to see how things are placed here with the order, 5, 6. Sometimes I'll sort by that CPU field. And then for each one, then, I'm giving what the affinity is for the memories and CPUs. And then also now, I'm running a D-look on the thing and saying how many pages are in what node. <coughs> so this thing has pages spread between node 1 and 2. And if we go back, so I'm getting CPUs 4 through 11, 20 through 27, and nodes 1 and 2. But I don't want that. I don't want to spread between multiple nodes. So here again, we're seeing each of the code two threads. Again, the second one is a shepherd, a sleeper. We don't want to worry about that. And I can see how all my pages are being spread for each one of those threads. And now I'm into the next CPU set. So that thing is still running. Go to top. I'm going to go to capital O and sort by CPU. See, where is it? It was a J usually. Yep, J. Oh, it looks like it finished. And by the way, for a while there, I think I might have killed that one, but we're now in the 150-second range of wall clock time. So let's take that one step further now. This time, I'm not going to go to 16 threads wide. I'm just going to go to one socket. That really is the smallest granularity since they're sharing the same socket, same socket's memory. And then I want to get eight here. Actually, let me just do four here. See how it places. And let me get rid of all this stuff. I'm going to do a D place uh, dash X2 to skip the second thread and see what that does for me. CPU set dash capital Q. Well, let's wait for it to actually get running it's in the compiler right now. Can probably spot it over here. I'm 
kind of watching up here to see it get to four sockets. Huh. Not doing too good. Let me do a report here. There we are. Something else is going on. That's what I just ran in the boot CPU set. Let me do a top. Oops. And I'm going to have a little bit of a problem here. There's my code to MP. Type in H. This is a known problem. They're all coming up on the same CPU. D place and the Intel libraries do not work together. OM place would solve the problem. So let me get out of here again. They're all running in one CPU. That's going to perform terribly. So this is really important for everyone. If you're under, if you're using D place, you have to do a KMP underscore affinity. equals disabled. We don't want to use the uh, placement that Intel is using. We need to use the D-place placement. Let me run that twice, actually. Heck, three times. So I'm waiting for the comp compilations to finish. I do have one code to MP running now. It looks like they're starting to run. There they are. So now I'm going to do a, a report on this one. Trying to wait for the last one to finish. Okay, fire off the report. I'd added into CPU set an argument such that uh, I'm not sure if I caught it, such that I could actually get look at a particular CPU set, just not the whole thing. Do more in RPT. I'm hoping that I caught everything here. I'm getting ready to go to MPI here for a second. So here we can, and look at nice clean placement now. Before they were all on CPU 4, but now I see I'm placed on CPU 12, and I've skipped the sleeper. I don't want to pin that thing. And then 13, 14, 15. Let's look at the next example. Okay. 8, skip, 9, 10, 11. Bring up top, do an H, oops, see my threads, there's the threads, oh, gone, all finished, com dash n code 2 MP, again, I'm trying to see where my timings are, I'm down into the 16 second range now that I've got proper pinning, but I still need to get better than that. But again, a lot of this was going to be the uh, barrier synchronization, the uh, KMP weights and stuff like that, the communication overhead, not the computation. And that goes back to the program itself. Let me do this again. Oh, before I do that, let me do a VI and DAW.PBS. Let me take one PNUM threads out of the equation. The latest Intel compilers, if OMP num threads is not set, it's taking the number of CPUs on the system. And if I'm uh, in a CPU set, I'm going to get more thread spawn than what's in the CPU set. 
in prior Intel libraries, it just looked to see what was in the CPU set for the maximum number of threads to spawn. So I'm expecting this one to actually thrash with 32 threads for each of these things. Threads on. And you can see there are a lot of threads here now. Let me do a PS-ET for code 2 MP. 18 threads, okay, on a 32-thread machine. Uh, this is probably the older compiler that's still behaving that way. Let's see where my t times are. That one was at 23 seconds. I just want to see what I can do here. Again, I know this thing does not scale. I'm just going to go two threads wide and see if that does anything here. And everything else looks okay. Get rid of that one. There we are. And this time I want to see if I can catch it all again. Dash V. Uh, where's my code to MP? capital H. So I can see it's on two CPUs, four and five. My report is still running for some reason. Work's done. That was probably the process, probably lost it there. Let's see what we get here in the report. So I do have some code to MPs. So again, there's a worker, there's the shepherd, there's another worker. And then for each of these PIDs, the affinity mask is putting this on one CPU and one memory node. So I want to see this bit mask skew across things and notice that most of the memory is on that one node now. Now there will be DSO, shared text, and a few things that you don't care about here. And then uh, that one's the sleeper, which we did not care about. And then here's the next one that's going to CPU 5. And then we're into the login CPU set. So let's try that again now. Well, before I do that, CSACOM N code 2MP. I was still in the 16 second range. And again, if we profile that, that'd all be barrier synchronization problems. So let me go back to eight threads. I'm okay with all of that. And let's try submitting a uh, code to Intel, this one here. Go ahead, let's submit a couple of them. Waiting for the compilation on those two. I'm going to do an O here and sort by CPU. And do I have, just checking to see if I have threads on or off. If they're off, now they're on. And there we are, and we can see nice clean placement here. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oops. And then 20, 20, 21, 22, 23. And this one is in trouble. It's spawning more. I asked for eight. I'm not sure how many I'm actually getting right now. They're done. 
Let's see what we got for data. Twenty three seconds again, which is where we were before when we were eight threads wide. But what about the code CSA com dash n code two? And let's get rid of the uh MP. And I'm not seeing any of those right now. Qstat A. We're we've got one code two running right now, but we don't really because the other two took all the jobs. Oh, we're starting to get some. I don't see uh, the code 203. Uh, might be something wrong with the job that isn't, for example, the uh, module file. Let's try that again. So I'm trying to see if when I submit them, even single threaded, whether I can get repeatable timings. anything back from them yet. Let's see, 131. What the output gives me. I need to move on here in a minute. Oh, and then like the uh, Intel compiles again. Thought I'd fix that. They might have been jobs that I'd submitted before. Yeah. Okay, I did find some compilation here. So I'm going to do one. Uh, MPI, and then we're done for the day. Okay, there they are. We're finishing. Let's see where we are for timings. Oops. Oh. And we're down in a nine second range, and let's hope that we can keep that consistent. Remember, we were seeing in the 12 to 20 second range before when it was contending with everything else. Okay, let's take a look at a MPI one here. This jobs directory is basically a whole bunch of job examples of profiling and stuff that are kind of the answer to some of the uh, lab exercises to make it easy to run the stuff through batch. So this one I want to go, let's call this thing eight, eight threads wide. Need to get my compiler in here. Looks like I had perf suite, but am I actually using it? I don't care about any of this stuff. And I'm going to comment out the profiling. We know it's going to be that SGI progress thing. Actually, let me just uh, comment out all of this stuff, different profiling examples. And then what am I doing? That's not what I wanted. I'm sorry. I want the code 603. Yep, eight threads wide. I don't need Intel compilers because I'm not multi-OpenMP parallel. 
GCC does support OpenMP, but not the dash parallel option. Everything there looks good. Let me get rid of the time command. And again, this one is too many threads wide, so I need to go, was I gonna go eight threads wide? Yep. Uh-oh, didn't come back quick enough, or it came back too quick. Uh. What was I working on? That was a Red Hat thing. Red Hat and SLES keep their modules in different places. Try it again. Okay. It's running. Let me do a CP, CPU set dash capital Q dash V for verbose. If I can catch it before it finishes. And I can see some placement here. Four, six, five, seven, 20, 21, 22, and 23. We don't care about the 18. It's one thing I also asked for, but they turned down was top being able to consolidate by, uh, CPU sets, so I can see it on a per CPU set basis. Let's see what's going on up here. It's finished now. Looks like it's done running. Let me just break out of this. And I didn't catch it. It wasn't around long enough. So let me try again. The timing wasn't right. It wasn't around long enough for me. Okay. Just about finished here for the day. Let's submit that again. Oh, we got them running right now. CPU set dash capital Q dash V into X. I'm looking at the numbering scheme here to see if there's any overlaps. One of the other things that's handy at this point is to be able to look at ProxGet debug info. We go going to here and do it. Looks like the work is finished, PS-E grip for code. Yeah, that's done now. Let's see if we are able to catch it here. I think those were all the things that were failing. PIX slash code six. Oh, not found in there. Oh. Let me try something else here. I kind of wanted to see the affinity as well. Okay, those are running. If I do a cat of slash proc slash sked underscore debug, put it into a file, and then vi that thing, and page down through it, Let's just go for code two. I'm sorry, code six is what we were looking for. And it looks like I missed it again. Not seeing any code sixes in there. What I was looking for was this particular line here. I mean, these things are not sticking around long enough for me. 
Okay. Okay. Cat slash proc slash sked underscore debug. See if we can find anything in there. Nope, not finding it. And I don't know why right now. I'm looking at each of the run queues here. <coughs> there is stuff there. Huh. Okay. Let's grep code and slash proc slash get underscore debug. Not even seeing it there, huh? Oh, they're finished now. Okay. I do have one finishing. Let's see if that com doesn't really help me here. I was trying to look at affinity and everything on this thing, but they're com they're going through too quickly. I think we're done for the day. Anything you want to ask? We'll come back to this and try this a little bit more tomorrow, and we got to get into the memory stuff and more into the D-Look summary. Any questions right now? At this point, I'm just uh, chasing down, trying to get this thing to stick around long enough to be able to look at the affinity, and they're not sticking around long enough for me to catch it. Okay, I'm going to stop the recorder. <laughs>